Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Before the video starts, I want to thank all the new subscribers for their kind words. I know my recent videos haven't fared the best with my main audience, and that's probably because they're a bit different to just talking about kids films. But honestly, I've put so much effort into those videos and I'm really proud of them. So again, thank you so much for the positive feedback. But alas, in this video, I go back to my roots. Trashing on a children's movie. Hooray! Dance monkey dance! And yeah, I can't wait for all the kids in my comment section saying that I hate every movie again. You know, it's almost like my channel was based on criticising media or something. So is it really that shocking that I'm negative towards so many things? I love movies. I wouldn't have this channel if I didn't. It wouldn't be worth watching a film if I knew it was always going to be terrible. And besides, I have talked about good movies in the past. Do some of you have selective memory or something? And anyway, I'm sure that I'll love the film that's being discussed today. What is it again? Oh, um, well, this is awkward. The Sandy Cheeks movie. This video is a continuation of the SpongeBob movie reviews on my channel. If you want a quick rundown on my opinions, I love the old episodes, love the first movie. The second one is okay, and the third movie is absolutely terrible and is just a big advertisement for their baby spin-off show. So the Sandy Cheeks movie is another spin-off. Great. Well, to be honest, out of the three spin-offs this series had to do, this on paper is the best one. SpongeBob's creator Steven Hillenburg always stated that he didn't really see spin-offs ever working for the show. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2018. And although some people claim that he might have changed his mind on the matter later on in his life, it is funny how all these spin-offs only get released after his untimely passing. Do you guys really think that Steven Hillenburg would be happy with this shit? At the end of the day, I guess it's not for me or you to say. But I would say to read between the lines, you know, do a bit of critical thinking, guys. He was clearly a very talented guy who created one of the best and most influential TV shows of recent memory. But it is to note that he thought that the series should have ended after the first movie. David Edelstein for the New York Times published an article just before the first movie was released. Here's what it said. When I mentioned to Mr. Hillenburg that I thumbed through a shopping catalogue on the plane to see him, and come across a page of Spongebob watches and CD players. He winced. I looked at the same catalogue, he said, and I was like... He paused and let out a long sigh. At first, it's both weird and flattering, and then after a while, you get tired of seeing it. It loses preciousness after a while. One night, I was really beat. We walked really late and went out to get some food at a takeout place, and I leaned over this gumball machine, just exhausted, and there was a Spongebob looking back at me. And it's just like, oh brother, Mr. Cohen, the co-director, remembers when the flood of Spongebob dolls and products began. I was really excited, he said, but Stephen looks grim. He said, my biggest nightmare is that I'm going to be at the beach one day, and one of these dolls is going to wash up on the shore like garbage. Being a marine biologist who also surfs, he doesn't want to be responsible for bringing a glut of garbage into the world. Did this man really seem unsure to you? It's almost like the guy was starting to go crazy because of the amount of overexposure his creation was getting. And this was back in 2004. And Mr. Hillenburg, you were not responsible for bringing a glut of garbage into the world. It's Nickelodeon's fault for milking your show into the ground. So yeah, back to the Sandy Cheeks movie. The Patrick Star show clearly doesn't work because when does a show with the comic relief character ever work? And as for the Baby Camp Coral show, do I even need to explain myself with that one? But the Sandy Cheeks spin-off movie... Eh, I could see that working. She's kind of like the Puss in Boots equivalent character of this universe. I think she's level-headed enough and different enough to have her own movie. But I'll tell you what, the people who could have made this work wouldn't have touched it with a 10-foot pole. Because to be honest, it kind of feels too late having this released 25 years later after the show premiered. I'll still give this a chance though, because you know, if it's great, it's great. I'm not going to take anything away from this movie if it's good. Wait, hang on a minute. It's already got a 4.1 on IMDb. My god. Wait, the film's not even out yet. It's not out until the 2nd of August. I'm writing this part of the video in July. How have you guys already reviewed it? Oh yeah, the movie got leaked in January. I'm sure that most of you guys know that, but genuinely, that's not a joke. Some guy hacked into Netflix and the whole movie was just sitting there. So it was eventually released onto X in its entirety. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty obvious why no YouTuber has reviewed it in the previous months. But anyway, is this film actually good? 
Um, all I have to say is that if you find all the other spin-offs terrible, you'll hate this one. But if you like them, you will probably like it. This was absolutely shockingly bad. I didn't expect anything less, to be honest. Although this doesn't make me half as angry as Sponge on the Run, they managed to outdo themselves yet again. The Sandy Cheeks movie is just bafflingly bad and just so forgettable. It's just complete corporate bollocks. For all the crap I gave the third Spongebob movie, at least there was some clear effort put into the animation and soundtrack. What the hell does this even have? In this movie, Spongebob talks about him having mad skills and also talks about streaming services. In your absence, I've gained some mad skills. And all my streaming videos on demand. <laughs> I can't demand them anymore! Again, for the Nickelodeon meat riders, do you really think that Steven Hillenburg would have been remotely happy with this shit? This is just another level of awfulness. The third movie had nothing even close to crap like this. Why? Just why would SpongeBob SquarePants be talking about streaming services? Partly why Spongebob works so well is because he's timeless. It's not like The Simpsons where, although I absolutely do love that show, Homer Simpson is very much a product of his time, which is a big reason why the later seasons just don't work. Spongebob is a sponge who lives under the sea. That gives it so much charm and it worked because it was more about the gags and less about current topics, which both are fine, don't get me wrong, but it just makes Spongebob more timeless in my opinion. So why on earth is Spongebob talking about on-demand streaming services? Oh yeah, probably money. And the fact that this was released on Netflix. The whole plot of this movie is that Sandy Cheek's organisation that she works for steals Bikini Bottom. And how does she know this, do you ask? What the hey? Boots! Marine Biology Lab, Galveston, Texas. Well, that was pretty convenient, wasn't it? Everyone gets stolen too, apart from Sandy and Spongebob and we really have a bit where they home in on Gary being missing. I'm glad they didn't dwell on that, but man, it's still so annoying when they've just milked that plotline to death now. Also, there is some clear flanderization in this too. Spongebob is just too stupid and childish in this. In the original season, Spongebob was childish and sensitive at times, but he still was an adult. If this happened to Spongebob in season one, he would at least know what's going on. You can't tell me that he's that stupid and oblivious. Anyway, Spongebob and Sandy end up travelling to Texas, and it becomes a buddy road trip movie for a while where we meet Sandy's family. And Sandy's family are the most bland and forgettable characters in the whole thing. They could have actually given them a plot, but they do nothing with them, apart from the fact that they're circus performers and that they actually miss Sandy. It's that surface level. There's really nothing else interesting about any of their characters. They finally get to the lab that she works for, and it turns out that Wanda Sykes is her boss turned evil. She wants to turn Spongebob and her friends into marketable toys and make loads of money. I mean, are you serious? It doesn't get more ironic than that, does it, Nickelodeon? It's actually amazing how much they lack subtlety. This plot is literally what you have done to the show, and the real-life actors are shockingly awful. They could genuinely not have given less of a shit. It's clear that nobody cared about this doo-doo movie. And is it me or does this person look like Mrs. Kwan from the Cat in the Hat movie? They really try and fit in all the side characters in this for seemingly no reason. Like Plankton seems like he's going to be a side villain at one point in this film, and they just do nothing with him. Like, why even do that in the first place? There's also a new pointless character like the horse character that is Sandy's pet. Like, I'm not being funny, who even are you? Get out of this movie, man. The horse is barely in it too, so why even have it in there? I guess to show that Sandy had to have someone she cares about to go save Bikini Bottom? But are you forgetting that she's a nice person anyway? And she has other friends? Who thinks of this shit, man? Jesus Christ, think about it for more than two seconds. There's also these dance number songs which are quite bad, and I've already completely forgotten about them and I've only just finished watching it. The film also looks like shit, which is actually saying something considering how good the third Spongebob movie looked. It just seems like no one had faith in this production at all. And not only do they try and fit in a liar reveal at the end, but Sandy keeps mentioning throughout the film how much she likes science. And I guess this is to remind you that this modern version of her character has no other character traits. Flanderization, everyone. All I have to say is don't waste your time on this, and don't give this product any attention at all. Thanks for watching. It's junk. First class junk. And